Hi everyone, uh, I'm going to use a couple of problems from the test we tried taking as a uh, review for um, how to solve multiplication and division problems with decimal numbers. Um, each of these problems is going to have decimals only in one of the numbers, so in multiplication only one of the factors will have decimal numbers, and in the uh, division problems uh, there will be decimals um, only in the whole and in the quotient. Um, we'll be learning about uh, more complex problems uh, later on in the year. So the first problem we're going to try comes right from that test. It is 375.61 times 408. So 375 and 61 hundredths times 408. Now, we, we did a lot of looking in detail about why this all works the way it does, um, but for right now, I'm just interested in making sure we have the procedure mastered for the standard ag algorithm of multiplication. So that's what I'm going to focus on. I, uh, if you go back and look at some of my previous videos, I think there's information about why this works the way it does, or if you have questions, you can always ask me in the comments or send me a message. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this up like this, 375.61. Now, in multiplication, unlike every other operation we've done, we uh, when we set it up for a standard algorithm, we ignore the decimal points. What we do instead is we make sure that the digits are lined up from the right. Um, if they're not lined up all the way to the right, I'm going to run into problems. It's not impossible to solve it other ways, but I make my life much easier if I do that. Now multiplication really becomes about following the procedure carefully and keeping our neat work. Wait, work neat, not neat work. <laughs> um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be taking first the ones place and multiplying all the digits in the first factor by the digit in the ones place. Then I'm going to do the same for the tens place and the hundreds place, and we're going to have to um, keep track of we're dealing with tens and hundreds as we go. So let's start with the ones place. Eight times one is eight. Eight times six is 48. So what I do is I put the eight from 48 there, and I carry the four. Now, why is that? Well, I promise not to talk about it too much, but it's because we're bundling into that next place value, um, and we're going to be adding it on after we multiply. So the next thing we do is 8 times 5. Uh, 8 times 5 is 40. And so I've done that, but now I need to make sure I add on that 4 that we carried forward from when we multiplied 8 and 6. So 8 times 5 is 40, plus 4 is 44. And again, I have to carry whatever I end up with in the tens place forward. 8 times 7 is what we're up to. Um, some people like to draw lines as they do each one. For me, I find that the work gets very messy quickly. If you can keep that straight or if it helps you, that's fine. For me, it's kind of worse if I do it that way. But, you know, you have to find what method is going to work well for you here. So I'm on... Otherwise, I just have to keep track of it in my mind, which is what I do. 8, eight times 7 is what I'm up to. 8 times 7 is 56, plus 4 is 60. So the 0 goes down below. The 6 is carried. Um, 8 times 3 is 24, plus 6 is 30. Because I've run out of things to multiply, there's nowhere more to carry. I just write them both down below. Now, these numbers that I've carried can get distracting or confusing. Uh, I'm just going to cross them off quick before I move on to the tenths place. Now I'm, I'm multiplying by 0 in the tens place. Now this one's a little tricky because, first of all, I have to put a 0 in to hold the tens place. Because um, This first one, let's imagine it was a number other than 0. Let's imagine, imagine it's um, 5 or something. So if I was doing 5 times 1, um, 5 times 1 is 5, but it's in the tens place, so it's actually 50. So 50 times 1 would be 50, and that's why we add the 0 down below, to show that we're not dealing with 1s, we're dealing with 10s. Now, since I'm multiplying by 0, everything is going to be 0. 0 times 1 is 0. 0 times 6 is 0. 0 times 5 is 0. 0 times 7 is 0. 0 times 3 is 0. 
zero in every place. Now, the next one is times four. Now, but it's not four, it's 400. So I'm going to add two zeros to show that I'm in the hundreds place. And then we go through the same procedure. I'm going to be multiplying four times each digit in turn. Four times one is four. Whoops. Four times six is 24. So four goes below, and I carry the two into the next place. Four times five is 20, and I add two, so 22. And again, I carry. Four times seven is 28, plus two is 30. So zero goes below, three gets carried. Four times three is 12, plus three is 15. Okay, and that goes down below because, again, there's no more place to carry forward to. Now I have to add all of my partial products. The product is the answer to a multiplication question, and these partial ones are my partial products. So now the last step is to take our partial products and add them together. We're going to go one place value at a time, just like in a normal addition problem. Um, so just like, we could just imagine that we're adding these three numbers. We'll go ones, tens, hundreds, thousands, etc. Eight plus zero plus zero is eight. Eight plus zero plus zero is eight. Then we have four plus zero plus four, which is also eight. Zero plus zero plus four is four. Zero plus zero is two. Plus two is two. Three plus zero plus zero is three. Now, what about here? We have empty spots above it. Um, if we have empty spots, those are zeros. So 0 plus 0 plus 5 is 5. And then again, nothing plus 1 is 1. Um, the reason we have so many zeros in this is really uh, because of the 0 in the middle of the second factor uh, from 408. Um, that gave us a whole row of zeros. Um, if there wasn't a 0 in one of the factors, we wouldn't have quite so many. Now, we are not done yet, and let's think for a minute about how I know that. If I look back at our original numbers, 375.61 and 408, you know, both of those numbers are around 400. And 400 times 400 is about 160,000. Well, it's exactly 160,000. But, so, whatever my answer is to this problem, because the numbers that I'm using <clears throat> are near 400, my, my, my final product should be around 400 as well. Um, now, let me take a look. Right now, if I added in commas, I would do that here and here. And so I've got something that's a little bit over 15 million. That can't possibly be right. So what's my mistake? My mistake is I forgot to do something with the decimal points. Now, we've only been looking at problems that have decimal points in one of the two factors. And what people want to do is to bring down the decimal point. Now, that doesn't quite work. And when we do uh, decimal multiplication with numbers with decimals in both factors, it'll be clearer why that is. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to think about how many place value shifts did we pretend we were making. So here, I'm pretending that I did a uh, did two shifts. So it's like I'm multiplying 408 times 37,561. Now, because I did that, though, I need to make two place value shifts back in the bottom. And that's where my decimal point should go. So here, when I put in the comma, I have 15,000... Nope, I'm sorry. 153,248 and 88 hundredths. So that is actually very close to 160,000, which is what I said um, it, my product should be near. So when we do multiplication and division, it's not enough just to know all of the procedures, because we can make mistakes. Um, we have to be able to think about what makes sense for an answer.
Um, and that's why I did that little bit of estimation there. It helped me think about what is reasonable. Um, but even if we didn't have that other tool, even if we just focused on um, the procedure, we still need to make sure that we're doing all of the steps and, and that making sure we have that final step where we um, place the decimal point back into the product. Um, one last thought about this before I move on to division is that it's very easy to practice multiplication. In, invent two numbers and multiply them. Um, you can check yourself with a calculator, you can check yourself with a friend or an adult. Um, it's very easy to practice this and the more you practice it, the, um, the faster and more accurately you'll be able to do it. So what I would suggest is if you understood this problem, um, challenge yourself by inventing some more problems for yourself and work through them and then uh, use something like a calculator or somebody else to check you. Alright, so let's take a look at division. We've been studying problems where we are dividing by a two-digit number and frequently the whole or the quotient, the answer, uh, are going to involve decimal numbers. Um, so let's take a look at this one. This is question three from the test I gave you and it's a relatively challenging one. Um, but if we pay attention to the details, we can certainly get it right. First of all, when we set up a division problem for long division for the standard algorithm, um, the number we are dividing up goes underneath, the number we are dividing by goes outside. So we would read this, even though it looks like it's the opposite, 1.449 divided by 23. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to add a decimal point above the decimal point in the hole. That's going to make sure that my quotient, my answer, ends up with the right place value. Um, now, what we're going to be doing here is this is the number we're dividing up. This is what we are dividing it by. We're going to test each place value to see if we can make at least one group. So can we make a group of 23 out of 1? No. Can we make a group out of 23 out of 14? No. Now, something really important here. I can't make any groups of 1. So out of 1, so I'm going to put a 0 above it. I can't make any groups out of 14, so I'm going to put a 0 above there. Now, can I make groups of 23 out of 144? Yes, I can. Because remember, when we're dividing this up, we're going to pretend that this decimal point isn't there. Um, it's going to make sure that everything is in the right place value. But we're going to just ignore it for the time being. We're going to pretend that this is 144, even though it's really 144 hundredths. Um, now, I use a mental math strategy to help me get started here. I'm going to think about about how many groups do I think I could make. Well, it's got to be less than 10 groups, because 10 groups would be 230, and it's going to be pretty far away from there. It's going to be a lot more than one group, though, because that would be just 23. So I'm going to start by testing five groups. And what I do is I just set, I just um, multiply. So 23 times 5, that's five groups of 23. 15, I carry the 1, 5 times 2 is 10. Uh, so 115. Well, that certainly fits. I can make, I can subtract 115 away from 144. But I wonder if I could make even more groups. So I'm going to test six groups. 23 times 6. 6 times 3 is 18. Carry the 1. 6 times 2 is 12. Plus 1 is 13. 138. That's pretty close to 144. I'm guessing that's going to be right, but I want to be sure. I'm going to try seven groups. 23 times 7. 7 times 3 is 21. Carry the 2. 7 times 2 is 14. Plus 2 is 16. 161. Now, 161 is larger than 144, so I can't actually make seven groups. So six groups is the best. Um, so six times 23, I just solved that. It's 138, because what I'm doing in this step is I take the number of groups, I multiply it um, by how large the groups are, and then I write the product down here. Um, that's how much I've used so far in the division. Um, and then I subtract. Uh, I'm going to have to do regrouping here. Uh, or borrowing, rather. 
So that becomes 3, that becomes 14. Um, 14 minus 8 is 6, and then these are zeros. Now, the next step is I bring down the number in the next place value, 69. Um, I have a guess, which is that it's going to be three groups. And I'm thinking that because if it was 20, 3 times 20 would be 60. That, that looks very promising. So let's solve and make sure. 23 times 3. Uh, 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 2 is 6. Hey, look at that. So I can make three groups of 23 out of 69. Uh, 3 times 23 is 69. And I subtract. And I'm left with 0, no remainder. Fantastic. Um, so what that tells me is that 1.449 divided by 23 equals 0 0.063. Now, I have one more step I need to do, which is I need to check my work. And with division, this is really important because there's so many steps to division, it's very easy to make mistakes. To check, I multiply the quotient by the divisor. So I multiply the answer by the number I divided by. So what I'm going to have here is 0 0.063 times 23. Now remember, in multiplication, I'm lining up the digits not uh, to the right, not the decimal point. Um, and this is a good chance to practice standard algorithm of multiplication. Um, I'm going to be pretending that this is just the number 63. And But when I, I've made three shifts to do that. So when I get my product, I'm going to have to make three shifts back the other way. And so again, I'm starting in the ones place. I'm going to multiply by all the digits in the other factor. Then I'm going to do the tens place and do the same thing, but I'll have to add a zero to hold the place value. So 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. And 3 times 0 is 0. Now, in the next play, in the next um, line, I'm going to be multiplying by 20. So I add a 0, because it's the tens place. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 6 is 12 carry the 1, cross out the other one. 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1, and 2 times 0 is 0. And then I add them. 9 plus 0 is 9, 8 plus 6 is 14, I carry the 1, 1 plus 1 is, uh, plus 2 is 4, and 0 plus 1 is 1, and 0 is just 0. So I'm, I could even just leave it off if I want. Now, remember what I had to do up above? I shifted that decimal point out, so now I have to shift it back because I, I can't get rid of it. I just have to, I'm just moving it so that I can solve this more easily. Um, and it's three shifts back. And what I'm looking for is does this number match this number? And it absolutely does. 1.449. Division problems are a little bit harder to practice um, because it's easy to end up with ones where you don't get a zero remainder like that. So when if you practice them, um, it's okay to stop and take a remainder after a couple of decimal places. Um, you can just make them up for yourself, um, but they might not work out evenly like that. But see what happens. Um, and you know, pr practice the ones that I've sent home, um, and this is one of those things where you just have to keep working on it, memorize the routines, practice the multiplication. The multiplication is really important for this. Practice the subtraction step. Um, if you're not solid on multiplication and subtraction yet, that's going to make the division tough. So keep working on those things so that division's a little bit easier.
Um, so if you're finding that you keep getting messed up on the subtraction step, invent some subtraction problems for yourself. If it's the multiplication, keep working on the multiplication. Or if it's just you're having trouble remembering all the steps for the division, then practice that. Um, but choose the things that are going to help you the most and keep working on them. Um, there, there, there's, no, there's no shortcut here. It, it, this is all about practice and making sure you know all the routines. All right, well, thanks for studying this, and uh, keep up the good work.